Hello students, welcome to the subject of complex variable and partial differential equation. Myself, Dr. Ankit Acharya, and this is our first lecture for the chapter complex number. So, the first basic concept is definition of complex number. A number of the form z is equal to x plus i is called a complex number where x is called x and y both are real numbers. x is called real part of z and y is called imaginary part of z okay and this is a notation for x we are using real part of z with this notation capital r e in bracket z and for y imaginary part of z we use this notation capital i m in bracket z so i that is nothing but square root of minus 1 okay so this is just a basic concept for the complex number now uh, a complex number z is equal to x plus i y also can be represented in a Cartesian form with this notation capital uh, with this notation in bracket x y. Okay. Now next is the conjugate of a complex number. So we know that if z is equal to x plus i y, okay, if z is equal to x plus i y is a complex number, then conjugate of that complex number we use this notation z bar and z bar is nothing but x minus i y. Okay, z bar is nothing but x minus i y. So suppose z is equal to 2 plus 3i, then what is z bar? Z bar that is equal to 2 minus 3i. Okay. Just we have to change the sign of the imaginary part, right? If plus, then take minus, if minus, then take plus sign. Now after that, polar form of complex number if z is equal to x plus i y. Then we use this two notation x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta. Okay, and put this two value in this equation. So that's why we get z is equal to r cos theta plus i r sin theta, right? And if we take r common, so we can write z is equal to if we if we can take r common, so we can write z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta. So, this is exactly the polar form for the complex number z and also we can write r into e raised to i theta z is equal to r into e raised to i theta. So, this is exponential form. The first equation we called it polar form for the complex number z. The second equation, this equation we called it exponential form for the complex number z. Okay. And uh, what is r? The value of r is nothing but mod z and that is equal to, we can write r is equal to square root of x square plus y square. So, that is exactly the distance from the origin to that complex number. And we also use this note, this notation mod z. Uh, sometimes we called it absolute value or most probably we called it modulus value of z. Now, what is theta? Theta is nothing but 10 inverse y by x. Okay, theta is nothing but 10 inverse y by x and that is exactly the argument of z that is argument of z now the next concept is principal argument what is the meaning of principal value of the argument or sometimes we called it principal argument now principal argument is always between minus pi to pi okay principal argument is always between minus pi to pi right and uh, we are using this notation capital A R G in bracket Z. Okay, so that's why capital A R G in bracket Z that is called principal argument of Z. We use theta, right? So now in your case, theta means we are always writing our principal argument. Now the next, first of all, you have to understand that how we can find principal argument. Okay. Suppose, uh, suppose our complex number z is equal to x plus i y. So, try to follow this method. Suppose z is equal to x plus i y and if you want to find principal argument for any complex number, z is equal to x plus i y. And suppose uh, x is equal to 0. Suppose x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0. Okay. Then, that means what? Your complex number is on any one of the line either on x axis or y axis okay that means uh, suppose this is my complex plane suppose y is equal to 0 that means your complex number is on x axis this is my x axis and suppose x is equal to 0 then your complex number is on y axis 
clear and suppose you want to find principal argument for those complex number you have to follow this method that means first of all if x greater than 0 and y is equal to 0 okay if x greater than 0 and y is equal to 0 that means your principal argument is on this line okay positive x axis and in that case your principal argument that is equal to 0 because principal argument is nothing but the angle uh, making from the positive x axis okay so in that case your principal argument of z that is equal to 0 now if x less than 0 and y is equal to 0 okay if x less than 0 and y is equal to 0 then principal argument of z that is equal to pi okay so that means on this negative x axis right so here principal argument of z that is equal to pi clear now third case suppose x is equal to 0 and y greater than 0 that means principal argument in that case pi by 2 right in that case pi by 2 so this angle and here your your complex number is on positive y axis so in that case principal argument that is nothing but pi by 2 clear and number 4 if x equal to 0 and y less than 0 that means in that case principal argument of z that is equal to minus pi by 2 so your complex number is on negative y axis so this angle that is exactly the minus pi by 2 angle from positive x axis so principal argument of z in that case minus pi by 2 so try to understand this rule first of all carefully if x greater than 0 and y is equal to 0 principal argument is 0 if x less than 0 and y equal to 0 that means this angle so principal argument that is pi if x equal to 0 and y greater than 0 then principal argument is pi by 2 and if x is equal to 0 and y less than 0 then principal argument is minus pi by 2 okay now after that uh, suppose your complex number is on any one of the quadrant okay not on the line that means x not equal to 0 and y not equal to 0 okay x not equal to 0 and y not equal to 0 and z is equal to but always x plus i y okay so how we can find principal argument that is our next case and for that you have to first of all find alpha find this alpha what is alpha alpha is nothing but 10 inverse mod y by x okay 10 inverse mod y by x so we are taking x and y both are positive so that means now your complex number is in first order and the value of alpha that is always between 0 to pi by 2 okay the value of alpha is between 0 to pi by 2 now first of all if x and y both greater than 0 okay then principal argument principal argument of z that is equal to alpha that is equal to theta okay we are using this notation principal argument that is nothing but theta so theta is equal to alpha now suppose x less than 0 and y greater than 0 that means your principal argument is in which quadrant second quadrant okay so in second quadrant you have to follow this rule principal argument that is equal to theta that is equal to pi minus alpha okay after that x less than 0 and y less than 0 that means x and y both are negative so in that case principal argument of z that means theta theta is nothing but alpha minus pi and suppose x greater than 0 and y less than 0 so in that case principal argument of z that is equal to theta that is equal to minus alpha okay so geometrically you can understand suppose your complex number is in first order that means in this order so this is my angle this is exactly theta suppose my complex number is in second order so this is the value of theta right and suppose my complex number is in third order so you have to take this angle right okay this angle that is theta and suppose my complex number is in fourth order then this angle that is my theta okay so you can easily understand from geometrically also right now let's solve some example uh, suppose i want to find suppose i want to find the principal argument of f of z that is 1 upon root 3 plus i so clearly first of all we have to write this function in the form of x plus i y okay so 1 upon root 3 plus i 
मल्टीप्लाई विथ रूट थ्री माइनस आई कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ रूट थ्री प्लस आई ओके एंड डिवाइडेड बाय रूट थ्री माइनस आई सो ऑन न्यूमरेटर नाउ वी हैव रूट थ्री माइनस आई एंड ऑन डिनोमिनेटर वी हैव एक्स प्लस आई वाई इन टू एक्स माइनस आई वाई दैट इज ऑलवेज एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर सो ऑन डिनोमिनेटर वी हैव फोर राइट सो रूट थ्री बाय फोर माइनस i by 4 first of all you have to find out the quadrant which quadrant this complex number fourth quadrant because x is positive y negative clear so first of all find alpha the value of alpha that is 10 inverse mod y by x and what is the value of x and y the value of x is root 3 by 4 and the value of y that is minus 1 by 4 so 10 inverse mod y by x that is we can say that 10 inverse modulus value of minus 1 by 4 Divided by root three by four, so that is ten inverse one by root three. Clear in ten inverse one by root three, that is pi by six. Okay, and that's why what is the value of theta? Theta is nothing but don't forget principal argument of z, that is minus alpha, and that that's why this is equal to minus pi by six. Okay, now let's solve one more example. So our next example is. Uh, find the principal argument of f of z, where f of z is what minus two upon one plus i root three. Okay, so first of all, we convert this complex number in the form of x plus i y. Okay, where x is a real part and y is a imaginary part. So that's why first of all, we have to multiply with one minus i root three. Okay, because in denominator we have one plus i root three. And conjugate of one plus i root three, that is one minus i root three. So that's why we multiply with one minus i root three upon one minus i root three. Okay. So uh, I just write here f of z once again. F of z that is equal to uh, minus two upon one plus i uh, root three. And now I multiply with one minus i uh, root three and divide it by one minus i. Root three, okay. And now uh, this equal to now because of uh, you can see that in denominator we have uh, something like that x plus i y into x minus i y, and multiplication of x plus i y into x minus i y that is x square plus y square always, okay. Because uh, we know that a minus b into a plus b that is equal to a square minus b square. So here we will get something like that x square. Minus i y whole square and what is i square? I square is minus one, so that's why always we get x square plus y square. The multiplication of x plus i y into x minus i y that is always x square plus y square. Okay, so that's why here we get minus two. Okay, uh, multiplication of minus two with one minus i root three, so minus two plus two i root three, and in denominator. Uh, we have one plus three, so four. Okay, so this equal to minus one by two plus i root three by two, something like that. Okay, uh, root three by two. So here, what is your x? X is equal to minus one by two. Okay, and what is your y? Y that is equal to uh, root three by two. So x is negative, y is positive. So that's why your complex number is in which quadrant? Your complex number is in second quadrant, okay? Because x is negative and y is positive, okay? In second quadrant, what is our principal argument? Pi minus alpha, okay? And what is our alpha? Alpha is nothing but 10 inverse mod y by x. So that's why first I find alpha, the value of alpha that is 10 inverse, okay? 10 inverse mod y by x. And what is y by x? The value of y by x that is uh, root three. Clearly, so 10 inverse because of modulus y by x. So negative sign become positive. So directly you can write 10 inverse root three, and that is equal to pi by three. Okay. So the value of alpha that is pi by three. And now uh, theta, which is my principal argument of z. And as a notation, I can write theta. Theta is nothing but pi minus alpha. Okay, what is my alpha? Alpha is pi by three. So pi minus pi by three, and that's why this is two pi by three.
here this is 2 pi by 3 so important example asking did you examination okay so once again uh, you can see that x and y x is negative y positive so your complex number is in second quadrant alpha is pi by 3 and uh, principal argument is uh, pi minus pi uh, pi minus alpha so pi minus pi by 3 so that's why that is 2 pi by 3 okay uh, next example express root 3 minus i into polar form okay and uh, we know that what is our polar form for any complex number z is equal to r into cos theta plus i sin theta okay where r is equal to what r is that is equal to square root of x square plus y square and theta theta is nothing but principal argument of z okay don't forget theta is nothing but principal argument of z okay so you can easily find out the value of r okay so that's why here r is what r that is equal to uh, first of all what is x uh, for this com uh, this complex number z is equal to uh, root 3 minus i so x that is equal to root 3 and the value of y that is minus 1 okay so r is equal to square root of x square plus y square so 3 plus 1 and that is equal to 2 okay square root of 4 that is 2 now theta now uh, i want to find theta that means principal argument and for that uh, your complex number is in which quadrant is in x is positive y negative so your complex number is in fourth quadrant okay your complex number is in fourth quadrant so in fourth quadrant theta is equal to minus alpha if you remember theta is equal to minus alpha so first i find alpha alpha that is 10 inverse mod y by x okay and uh, what is the value of y y is minus 1 x is root 3 so 10 inverse 1 by root 3 okay because we are taking modulus value so negative sign become positive and the value of 10 inverse 1 by root 3 that is pi by 6 and that's why uh, what is my principal argument principal argument that is called theta that is minus alpha and that is equal to minus pi by 6 okay and that's why uh, now put this value the value of theta and the value of r in this equation in this formula okay r into cos theta plus i sin theta so r is equal to 2 and theta is equal to minus pi by 6 so that's why i can write z is equal to r r is equal to what 2 into cos minus pi by 6 and plus i sine minus pi by 6 okay and uh, so uh, we know that cos is an even function and sine is an odd function so that's why i can write this equal to cos pi by 6 minus i sine pi by 6 okay and this is exactly the polar form and instead of z i can write uh, root 3 minus i okay which is my complex number root 3 minus i okay so thank you